I was just thinking, first of all, I was thinking, how did it get to be 3 p.m.? Second of all, well, I guess it's only Wednesday. It's only Wednesday, but man, time flies. Little Bonnie Bell lip smacker-esque type thing a friend gave me, isn't that funny? My Gen X people will know what I'm talking about. Um, here's the thing that was cracking me up, actually, as I just started this TikTok Live. Hey, Erin, nice to see you, so you're gonna get a kick out of this. Um, I was realizing, I wear the same stuff over and over again. They are clean, they are different, do not worry. However, I'm always wearing like a black t-shirt and stuff. And so like when I go to upload my TikTok lives, um, I'm like, man, I just like, it's hard to tell visually which one is the same. Like if it's the same, um, there were, you know what, my mug's in the other room. Husband's gonna bring it to me at some point. Um, anyhow, I was thinking, you know how on, what was it, like on Laverne and Shirley when they talked about like the underpants that had Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, like embroidered on the bum? I was thinking like, it cracked me up. I should have like a two, I should have a Wednesday shirt on to be like Wednesday. Um, it's probably not going to happen, but it's kind of fun to think about. So here, hold on just a sec. Um, so hey, hey, interesting time of day for me to do a TikTok live. Now for those for those in the know who go to the Melrose, for those of you who are on the TikTok, or excuse me, the Destination Decluttered email mailing list, I literally just moments ago added a bunch more um, TikTok uh, live schedules to the page where you find those things out, okay? Now see, this is interesting. So Therapy Gal Sue is saying, hi, it's a lunchtime work break for you. Awesome, hey, could you bring me like a cup of tea and a little fancy, like my, my little mugs? Yep. Awesome, thank you. See, I'll get my mug. He gave me some water right now, though, too. Um, what was I saying? Something about TikTok Lives. Oh, yeah. I scheduled a bunch of more TikTok Lives. Those of you who are on the mailing list, you'll know where to look for them. Now, I love that. See, Christine knows what I'm talking about. She says, I had this on my calendar because I'm in the secret mailing list club. Yes, and thank you. Time difference. Thank you, Erin. Distraction. So, therapy gal Sue is saying it's a lunch time work break for you. Her, you. It's three o'clock in the afternoon for me. Good afternoon, Karen. Nice to see you. I love it. You put it on your planner for the list. Now, when I scheduled some TikTok lives for the next coming weeks, I made sure to include at least one that I call as a West Coast friendly time because I know not everybody lives on the East Coast nor is an early bird like myself, but I want to take care of my peeps from coast to coast. Okay, there we go. Mm -mm -mm. It's been a busy day. All right. Now, oh, there we go. It's firework. And thank you, thank you, Erin, for being my my um, co-pilot right there. Yes, I'm in Pennsylvania. Um, though my voice, <laughs> my voice sounds like Massachusetts when I get talking excited or drunk, which sometimes happens. So, hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Not Fat Albert. I was listening to... Um, there's a guy, there's a friend of mine who does TikToks, Rod Kim, and he does a lot about, um, he's younger than us, like by decades, but he does a lot of stuff about 90s songs, and he was, he did a thing about, um, about, uh, what, wait, hold on, um, Weird Al Yankovic, and he did the Blurred Lines thing, but it was about, um, it was about uh, using words correctly, kind of funny. Anywho, but I digress. But I digreg, <laughs> speaking of TikTokers. So, hey, folks, I'm here to help you with your clutter. What do you got? How can I help you? You know, um, I will share with you. Um, signed up a bunch of new clients. I'm so excited. I'm going to be working. I already am working. I have worked with awesome people. I am working with awesome people. And I am about to start working with some awesome people because um, I've got... Two new clients I just signed up. Yes, I've got, yay. So I'm very excited about that. Um, and I'm actually getting to be kind of my max capacity. Yeah, I mean, I am only one person. There's only so many hours of the day and there's so many, oh, it's so many, so much energy. Now I share that with you because we are humans. We are not sh machines. We are not men, we are Devo. No, we are not machines and we're not zombies, okay? And yay, new for new peeps. Yeah, that's right. Actually, you know what? I want to make sure they know about our our secret, not so secret, uh, Saturday thing. Um, but yeah, treating yourself like a human being. Radical idea, I know, huh? But in this world, in this ever-changing world in which we live in, 
There are many people out there who say, deny your humanity and treat yourself like a robot or a machine. I call bullshit on that. I mean, you can try it and it may work for the short term, but what I'm discovering about myself and also many of my clients is we are all discovering that we do not legitimately have the energy we used to when we were in our teens, 20s, 30s, 40s maybe. And instead of being mad at yourself at who you're not, loving yourself for who you are and meeting yourself where you're at with the energy you have, with the amount of focus you have or lack thereof. ADHD people in the house, you know what I'm talking about, you know? Okay, now I want to hear this because Erin has some great news about paper clutter. Now, so many people struggle with paper. I will share with you. I used to, I used to struggle with that, but ever since I've started to help my mother with her stuff, I've gotten so much better on mine. So Erin is saying, great news on the paper clutter front. Great news from the paper clutter front, live. Live from the front, it's Erin. I've been struggling with my office, so I called my attorney. <laughs> now I love this, attorneys rock. She says, I've been struggling with my office, so I called my attorney, and my attorney says, throw all of that away. We have it if you need it. <sighs> How does that feel? Oh my gosh, have a freaking bonfire, huh? Doesn't that feel great? Notice the safety you feel. Your nervous system is like breathing a sigh of relief. First of all, oh my gosh, that's great. Somebody else has it. Yes, party on Wayne, okay? Party on Wayne. Party on, Garth. And how great is it to be able to get rid of so much crappy paperwork and also know that if you randomly need it, and hey, Robin, and thank you for the ice cream, num, 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 um, that somebody else has it on file for you. This is one of the really cool things about the world in which we live in now. Now, many of us grew up in a totally 100% paper-based world. We now live in a hybrid world. We live in partly paper and partly digital. So being able to take advantage of the good stuff that where we live in now brings us can decrease the amount of paper we have. You know, um, Belle is laughing at my Wayne and Garth reference. Oh, don't get me started. Wayne's World is one of my favorites. Oh, thank you, hon. Thank you. Hey, Erin, look, I'm raising my mug to you. I am raising my mug to you and to your awesome attorney. I will tell you, attorneys bring you peace of mind because they are experts at that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, Belle, 22, I am a Gen Xer with a pop culture, fluent second language like you wouldn't believe. Okay, yay, clink. Um, yeah, getting rid of paperwork, knowing that it's being taken care of peace. It's so funny. I was talking to one of my clients today and, um, I was talking about that, that phrase, peace of mind, peace of mind, not P I E C E, not a piece of your mind. We're going to get a piece of my mind. No peace, peace, peace and love, peace and love, peace of mind to me. You kind of feel it here. You know where I feel peace of mind, which maybe this is your brain and this is your mind. <clears throat> I feel peace of mind right here when I can be like, oh, oh my gosh, I feel so much better. My feels, the feels, they're typically in here. My head, I get a headache. I, my, it's so funny. When your head is not aching, this is how my, my brain works. When your head is not aching, it just feels regular. It never really feels awesome. It just feels awful sometimes, like when you get a headache. Isn't that interesting? When I feel good, I feel good, hmm, some places better than others, if you know what I mean, waka waka. Um, I feel good in my torso. I feel good in my nervous system. I feel good, whew, I can breathe, I can relax. Feeling good, that's why we're doing this, you guys. Yeah, it's to make your house look good, but I only want your house to look good if it makes you feel good. If your house looking good doesn't make you feel good, we're doing something wrong. <laughs> now, yeah, Kara says, oh, 3 p.m. Eastern. I can't hear you because I'm at the eye doctor, but I will listen afterwards. Yes, no worries, Kara. As you know, all of my TikTok lives are recorded and uploaded to um, Destination Decluttered on YouTube, so do not worry. And it's funny because if you're at the eye doctor and you've got the little box in your eyes, little drops, you might be not be able to see me, but you know what you look, you know what I look like, and you don't even need to see what I look like to listen and absorb like a plant. I'm going to water. Here's some, here's some water. I'm going to water you. I'm going to nourish you with some good stuff. And you don't even, you rarely need to look at the screen. All you need to do is listen. 
So use the ears and the heart, okay? Now you are at the eye doctor. I'm going to the eye doctor in a few days. So excited, getting better lenses, you know? Hey, Bonnie, check this out. Bonnie says, I have been shopping and bought nothing. I see nothing. Was that um, Schultz? I believe it was Schultz. <laughs> Schultz from Hogan's Heroes lives in my brain somewhere. I see nothing. Um, Bonnie has been shopping and bought nothing. So proud. Yeah. It is really cool to be like, I'm good. That feeling of I'm good. I don't need to buy a thing. If I need to, you know, like we need to go out to the grocery store because we are running out of food in the house. Because we live very, you know, we don't buy a lot of food at one time because we travel so much. But it can feel really good to go in and enjoy, like just go out and say, no, you know what? I see all this stuff, but I don't, I don't need it. I don't want it. And to come back empty handed, but it's a good feeling, you know? <laughs> oh, so good. Oh, I lied. Oh, this is funny. Kara just said, oh, I lied. I just turned my phone up. Hey, you know what? Technology, technology, people. And it was funny because uh, Sherry just, as I, I say, I can't hear you until I put my glasses on. Um, I don't know if this happens to anybody else. I need my glasses to find my glasses sometimes. Like I have these, oh, actually no, these are my my um, computer glasses. I have my regular glasses that are that are like um, translucent, transparent, translucent. I put them down and I sometimes can't find them because they're practically invisible, okay? So, anywho, I feel like, much like you can't hear somebody, you can hear somebody better if you have your glasses on, I think better and I focus better if I have a pen in my hand, if I know that I can write down something that inspires me. So here we go. Now I love it. Hey, Lori Hannah, nice to see you. Speaking of food, been decluttering my freezer, refrigerator and pantry over the last week. I love it, hun. What are you discovering? What are you discovering about that process? I will tell you what I discovered is this may happen to you. You buy certain things thinking you are going to eat or drink them. And then some things you eat or drink and others you don't. And then a certain amount of time goes by and unless you notice it, some things may expire. Now this happened to us the other day. It didn't expire, but I noticed that there was a bottle of seltzer. Now I'm a New Englander, so I like my polar seltzer and this is not like a, you know, I guess if they wanted to send me a case of it, they could. But we bought some seltzer. My husband and I usually drink them out of the cans. Every time we buy a bottle, it usually goes flat. But we had some friends visiting, literally 4th of July weekend. And so we bought some in pot bottles and it was a flavor that I don't particularly care for. I'm not like a raspberry fan. And so today's what, it's like mid-October and I'm like, we have not even opened this thing yet. And I said to my husband, are you gonna drink this? Do you like this flavor? And he says, no. And I said, okay, you know what I'm gonna do? It's not open, it hasn't expired. So we are going to declutter it. What are we going to do with it? Well, one of the things I like to do, and I'm going to write this down so I don't forget it, is I'm going to walk to the, the food pantry that we have. Walk to packs. And I'm going to donate the food that is still good and unopened that I know that we're not going to eat. Okay, so Lori noticed that she buys foods that I keep for too long, expired or freezer burned or still good, but just never used. Yeah, get curious about that, right? Notice that we put food in the freezer with all good intentions. Oh, I'm gonna freeze this and I'm gonna, um, and I'm gonna eat it. I'm gonna eat these leftovers or whatever it is. I'm gonna buy a lot of it because it's on bulk. I'm gonna freeze it, I'm gonna eat it. And sometimes we do and sometimes we don't, we get sick of it and we don't buy it. You know, um, my husband, I declutter pretty much all the time in a loving way. I get bored with food really easily. Sometimes I eat the same thing over and over again. And other times I'm like, oh my gosh, I do not want to eat that again. So I'm very mindful, very demure, very mindful of what, how long stuff is in the freezer. And I will say to my husband, come on, we are not going to go buy something else to put in the freezer until we start eating what we have here now. And so some, sometimes we'll have some very unusual things for dinner. But you know what? It's nourishment. I'm not also a big cook, so it doesn't matter. I will gnaw on something and be done with it. Um, but notice the stuff that you declutter, decluttering your pantry, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Erin is, is spot on. She says it's like crafting. Good intentions when we buy it, then lose interest later and don't prepare it or eat it completely. When you know that about yourself, 
Decluttering helps you get to know yourself. Oh my God, she's going to say, getting to know you, getting to know all about you. I'm going to write that. I'm going to add that one to the, the list too. The um, Sam, I told you I'm going to get good ideas. I'm going to add that to our um, Spotify playlist, getting to know you. You're going to know about yourself. You're going to know that sometimes you're like, no, I'm done with that. I don't want to eat those. Or you try something, try it. You like it. You might like it. Hey, Mikey. No, sometimes you don't like it. And yes, and food gets lost in the back of the fridge. If you have a big fridge and there's a lot of stuff, stuff can, can get lost in the back. Now, I love this. I'm gonna, let's do some celebration for, um, for Judy. So Judy, I believe, signed up, showed up. Judy's on the mailing list, and I know this because she said she loved the Zoom. So I did a two-hour decluttering party Zoom just for the people on the Destination Decluttered free mailing list. We did that on Sunday, and Judy is saying, I just dropped off four big bags of clothes, books, etc. for the community thrift shop. Now I feel like, who is it? Lenny, Lenny and Squiggy, Lenny and Squig Tones. Um, rock on, Judy. Rock on with your bad self. That's awesome. You love the Zoom, but let me ask you, how, how does it feel now that you are four big bags lighter? If we weighed our houses, your house now weighs less, you know? Um, I love it. Legal Becky has a great idea. She says, I had friends over for my birthday and asked them to bring food for the food pantry instead of gifts. Yeah, notice notice when you have too much stuff. I was just talking about this with a new client yesterday. We don't need any more damn stuff in our house. Think about that now that the gift-giving holidays are approaching. Do you want any more stuff in your life? If you do, get specific about what they are and ask for what you want so you get what you want. But if you're like, oh my gosh, I don't need any more stuff. What I need is less stuff. Def destination declutter makes a great stocking gift and you, or it makes a great gift and you don't have to wrap it, right? Oh, excuse me, hot stuff, hot stuff. Um, okay, little samurai, I just moved all my stuff out of my matrimonial home after 20 years. Help, all in my rental home, okay. Notice the words you're using. This is the only way. This is I'm a, I'm a really good listener because that's what coaching is, is me listening to you so I can hear what you're saying and I can help you hear what you're saying. Notice you said you moved all of your stuff out of it and now all of it is in your rental home. Now, you sometimes do need to move everything out of a house if you're moving or whatnot. You have all your stuff. What I want to offer to you is do you still want all of your stuff? Now, I know myself, I don't want all my stuff. Um, even stuff just, just came out of the laundry. I went on vacation last weekend. I put on a pair of pants that I never really liked to begin with. Strangely, they're a larger size than the ones that are a smaller size that fit me better, but they're, the cut is all off. Now, I have stuff that's practically brand new that I'm like, I don't want these. So what did I do? I put it in a bag. So just because you own all of your stuff, everybody, not just little samurai, just because you own a bunch of stuff doesn't mean you have to like it, have to keep it, have to use it, have to eat it. Notice I said, there's pants that don't fit me. They get, they're cranky pants. They make me feel like my ass is big. And my ass may be big, but at least other pants don't make me feel like that. So I wash them and I put them in a bag to donate. I discovered about myself that I'm not drinking that thing of polar raspberry seltzer. It's not open, so I'm going to donate that. Just because it's currently in your life, if it doesn't work for you, you can release it from your life, okay? Uh-huh. Now, this is interesting. Uh, oops. Getting a counter... Oh, I, I, sorry, things backed up. I'm just going to do this. Do, do, do. Aaron says, getting a counter depth fridge has helped me buy less at the grocery store. Yeah, we do not have a huge fridge because it's just my husband and me. Um, and I like to keep it lean and clean in there. I, I don't like things when they build up and it's like... What was it, George Carlin? Is it meat? Is it cake? No, I like a clean fridge. I do. Because I also, you know, it's like we have some random stuff. Dinner is going to be interesting tonight. Uh, yeah, so we'll see. Pickles. But I digress. Um, notice if you have less storage, you keep fewer things. You may replenish them more. You know, now I saw, oh, CC Fitzhenry. Hey, it's been a while, Hans. How are you doing? Good to see you. Okay, awkwardly social. Does it look like I do not love stuff? I love stuff. I love trash. Anything dirty or dingy or dusty. Now notice, 
Oscar the Grouch loves stuff that's dirty, dingy, and dusty. Ragged and rusty and all that kind of stuff. He loves his trash. You love your stuff. But that's cool. I'm not saying don't love stuff. I'm not. I'm just saying check in with your stuff and make sure you still love it. If you still love it, rock on. Find a good home for it in your home so you can continue to look at it and it brings you joy. But if you don't love your stuff anymore, if it's not working for you, allow yourself to release it. Let it go. Let it go. Yeah. Now, Anessa's saying trying to not have so much stuff can be stressful. Yeah, having lots of stuff can also be stressful. So, you want to reduce your stress? Let me teach you a process to reduce your quantity of items you have in your house. Okay? So, yes, having stuff can be stressful. It's more stuff that you need to take care of. You got to find a home for it. You got to dust it. You know, I mean, Christine says, I'm only allowed to buy frozen veggies after tossing too many fresh ones. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Oh, I'm going to be good. I'm going to make this salad. You get home and you're like, I don't want to eat a salad. Yeah, I do the same thing. So I try to really just, luckily we live a few blocks from a grocery store. So I tend to just, we just tried to, we have some things frozen, but we tend to do a lot of fresh when we're around to do it. Okay. Now I love this. Okay. So Inessa 0804, um, learn from Judy. So Judy Upthread said she just gave away four big bags of clothing and books and things like that. We did a thing for the people on the mailing list, destination decluttered mailing, mailing list, excuse me, bourbon. And um, she was able to, it was, a, it was a two hour, like we all got on Zoom, we all decluttered and then we all did something with it. And Judy is saying after getting rid of those field big, four big bags, I feel less stressed and ready to work for 40 minutes tomorrow. The timer idea works. Yes, the timer idea works. And oh, Oceanana, yeah, the cranky pants. Who's wearing the cranky pants in the family? You know. You know when you're cranky. Wedgies, anybody? If your clothes do not work for you, if your underpants give you wedges, if they're too tight, if they're too loose, if they have a weird feeling to them, get rid of the stuff that doesn't make you feel good. Yeah. And when I say get rid of, let me be clear. Let me clear my throat. <laughs> I don't mean throw it in the trash. Some things you do need to throw in your trash. Like I have a pair of underpants that like the little side seam is ripping apart. I still wear them on occasionally, but I deserve better. I want to up upgrade my life. Like this is me. Like, oh, look at me. I'm a rich person. I bought myself a couple of new pairs of underpants. I'm not about to donate my old underpants. I, I will throw those away. But there are many things that we have in our lives that can go to other homes besides ours, okay? Now, I love this, um, and Judy is sharing what worked for her, using a timer. Anessa is saying, I'm gonna have to try it a time. Yes, the benefit of having a timer is what I like to say, and those of you know are gonna say it, chunking it down. Now, chunking it down is not like a phrase that I learned it from coaching. I learned it from people I learned coaching from, and I got it when I was coaching. It's not looking at the entire thing, being like, oh my God, this whole house is a mess. Yes, it could be. Looking at it with blinders on, looking, focusing down, instead of looking at the whole thing, looking at a little chunk of it, that's how you get started. That's how you put one foot in front of the other. So setting a timer is a chunk of time. Maybe you don't want to declutter your house for all day. That's uh, Neither do I. Set a timer for any amount of minutes, declutter for that amount of minutes, check you out, you have decluttered. You have started something you may not have done had you not turned on the timer. And everybody, time for timer, right? I should probably use that one. Oh my God, you guys, how about this? This is usually a clock, time for timer, okay? I'm totally gonna put that in my, in my Gen X lexicon when I'm coaching, okay? Yes, Judy says before the timer, I was overwhelmed and wouldn't start. Notice the word overwhelm. When you feel overwhelmed, when you say the word overwhelmed, it means you're looking at it too big. The opposite of overwhelm is down, is chunking it down. You know? <laughs> Alex says, I will after I use that as a rag. I'm not saying I might not use it as a rag, but you know, we'll see. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes, the feeling of overwhelm comes from looking at too much thinking too big. 
Notice if you're like a mountain climber, you could look and be like, I want to get to the top of that mountain, but man, I got to climb all those steps. Oh my God, that's overwhelming. But then what do you do? You look down, put one foot in front of the other. Now this overwhelm and getting started is one of the reasons why I called my coaching Destination Decluttered. Now here's a funny thing. I realized I didn't even, I wasn't even polite. I don't even think I introduced myself once. I just got on here instead of rambling. I guess this is what happens in the afternoons. Um, my name is Beth. I'm a decluttering life coach. My coaching is called Destination Decluttered. Um, I'm here on TikTok. If you like what you hear, follow me on TikTok. These TikTok lives are recorded and put on Destination Decluttered on YouTube. I have a free mailing list at destinationdecluttered.com. And the best of the best is I do one-on-one -on -one paid coaching with an awesome group of clients. All right? If you want any of the info on that, check out my website. Okay, destinationdecluttered.com. Okay. Um, now I can't remember what I was saying. Something about clutter, I'm sure. Time for timer. I'm going to write that one down too. Time for timer. Yes, overwhelm keeps you stuck. Chunking it down gets you started. And once a body is in motion, that body tends to stay in motion. When a body is, when you're stuck, when, when you're thinking you're stuck, you're not really stuck. It's like more like freeze tag. Like you pretend you're stuck, but you're not really stuck. But if you don't, if you feel like, if you tell yourself you don't know what to do, you'll probably be stuck. If you tell yourself this is a lot, this is going to be hard, it's probably going to feel like overwhelming. Let's, you know, overcome the overwhelm. Let's, let's calm down the overwhelm, people, so you can get started. Part of what coaching really does it, it's almost like I always use the driving metaphor, the driving in a car metaphor. That's why I have this thing kind of behind me. You are here and you want to be here. Your destination. Your destination. Before you even start decluttering, ask yourself, why am I doing this? Why? What's in it for me? Hopefully you have a good answer. Now here's here's a random thing. I remember once when I was when I started my other creative project years ago called Retro Roadmap. I remember we were talking about um, attorneys earlier. My accountant, an accountant I just met, she's like, "What's your why?" And I literally was like, "I don't even know what you're talking about. Like I don't go to the why." I understand what she was saying. She just phrased it poorly. What I want to offer to you is, if you're not excited about why you're doing the, the decluttering, you're probably not going to show up to do it. What's in it for you? What do you want your home to look like? Write that down. What do you want your home to function like? Easily. Psst, the answer is easy. I want an easy to live in home. And how do you want to feel in your home? Write all those things down. That's what you're aiming for. That's the only reason I want you to be doing decluttering is to make you feel better than you currently feel now. Okay. Okay. Now I love it. Um, Christine's relating to Ju Judy saying that so glad the timers work it for you. Junebug also is saying I'm overwhelmed with my bedroom and I haven't started yet. I appreciate the timer suggestion. Oh, Lori, <laughs> Lori Hannah says best coach, best clients. Okay, on fourth package, and now I've addressed the internal thoughts and feelings, and I'm much happier. You know? Thank you, hun. And here's the wonderful thing about coaching I will share with you is I am just a conduit. You are doing the work for you. You are you are work, you are helping yourself. Every time you show up to a TikTok live or a coaching session, you are helping yourself feel better. So this is why I do this. I don't want to make you feel worse. Temporarily, you might feel worse. It's almost like anything in life. You know, you get a stretch to grow and all this. I mean, I know this. I'm trying to do these strength training classes because I'm getting weaker as I get older. Sometimes we have to feel uncomfortable temporarily for that long-term benefit. So yes, there are going to be times when you're decluttering. It's not going to be as easy as you want it to be. But not all of it is going to be painful and tragic. There will be some decluttering that causes you to feel feelings, but when you move through those and you realize you can feel feelings and turn out okay, that gives you confidence. You have expanded your nervous system capabilities, your comfort zone. I don't want you to get out of your comfort zone. No, do not get out of your comfort zone. Why would you get out of a place that is comfortable? However, 
I want you to practice expanding your comfort zone. Like it's a, you know, a, what is that? A geodesic dome made out of saran wrap. Remember when we had COVID and they had the places like the, uh, the big, um, there were some restaurants that you could go sit under like a, you know, a saran wrap dome and eat outside, you know, is expand your comfort zone to include things that used to feel scary and hard that you didn't do. Now you can do it. You can do things you used to be afraid of. How freaking powerful is that? I think it's pretty cool. Hey, say si bon, si bon, si bon. So I've been chatting a while here. I obviously have had some, um, what do you call this stuff? Tea with some caffeine in it. How can I help you? Okay. All right. How can I help you with clutter? This is one of the things I do with my clients is I give them the space to listen for their answers. Notice when everything is constantly chat, 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 chat. You, your brain can't get a word in edgewise. Notice when you have a bunch of thoughts in your head. Sometimes you just need to quiet down. You know? You need to quiet down. You need to calm down. You need to sit down. You need to write down. There are so many variations of the word down. Going down. Going down. That's me doing my Mickey Dolans of the Monkees. Doing his James Brown, okay? Um, quieting down, slowing down, breathing down. Oh, hon, I'm sorry. Oh, Kara, Kara, honey bunch. I'm back. Sorry. My mom was diagnosed with Louis body and Alzheimer's last week. I will be decluttering a lot. Yeah. My dad actually, um, he passed away this coming Monday, the 21st will be the 14 year anniversary when my dad died. And he had Lewy body dementia, but they didn't know it for years because pri I really feel like prior to um, Robin Williams kind of putting it on in in the in the zeitgeist, nobody really knew what it was. It was it was not easy. So Kara, I'm giving you a virtual hug. Okay, it ain't easy, but you're gonna you're gonna get through it. Any way I can help you, you let me know. Okay, um, the Lewy body dementia. Um, people, there's now more resources than there were for, for 13, 14, 15 years ago when my dad had it. Um, know that we're all going through, we all are decluttering for various reasons. Now, I've decluttered my own house because I want a house that's easy to live in, but I also have an aging mother who you know lives in the same house that I grew up in, so she's been there since 1969. She also was a cluttered person, was as was my dad. So I am helping her but I'm also helping me, really. When I declutter my, when I help my mother with her clutter, so she has more peace of mind and isn't distracted by so many things. So notice there are so many reasons why you want to declutter. Make them good reasons for you, okay? Now I love this. Say, say, bon. One says, after I caught your live last live, I cleaned out some drawers and other items. Yippee! Yes, yippee! Hell's to the yeah! I'm glad that this kind of got a little spark in you. That's why I show up is to remind you to keep the fire burning. Oh my God, that's totally a Yacht Rock thing. Keep the fire. Kenny Loggins, maybe. That's not one that comes easily to my mind as far as the tune goes. I know they mentioned it on the Yacht Rock um, episodes that they had back in the early 2000s. All right. Um, there we go. Now, I love this. Um, Sam says, I had the glasses from the Zoom meeting the other day. They are donated and it feels great. Yes, Bustin' makes me feel good. Getting rid of stuff you don't want feels good. Your body does it all the time. You sweat out the toxins. You poop out the poop. You pee out the pee. Your body is a decluttering machine and it keeps things running smoothly. Be the person who does that in your life as well. If stuff is not working for you, if stuff isn't nourishing you, poop it out. <laughs> Poop it out. <laughs> now, that doesn't really work when I say that other people can be help your stuff. You don't want to hand anybody crap. So anything that's truly, truly crap, please throw it away. Flush it. But when you have items in your home that are still um, useful, they may not be useful to you, but they may be useful to somebody else. Donate, donate, donate. Never underestimate putting a table out on your sidewalk and putting a free sign on it. I walk past those all the time where I live. 
I put stuff on the side of my, my yard with a free sign on it when I don't want to deal with stuff. You know, just because it doesn't work for you, that's okay. You don't have to hang on to it, okay? Something, somebody lit, lit me up with a gift. I appreciate it. I don't really know what those gifts do, but I thank you for the gift. I do. Thank you. All righty. Um, I don't, yeah, it's funny. I guess I could get into that, but um, I'm not collecting. I don't know how to collect those gifts, but thank you. But, but I show up for you to remind you, you are worth living a life that feels good to you. And for the amount of time that many of us spend in our homes now, now more than ever, post-COVID, working from home, maybe you're retired, maybe you're spending more time in your house than you ever did. If your house makes you feel bummed, then you're hanging around feeling bummed for hours on end. We can change that. We can change that. You can feel better in your home by changing the amount of stuff you have in your home decreasing it usually, as opposed to increasing it. Capitalists and uh, retailers, of which I used to be both, want to encourage you to add more things to your house. I'm like, subtract it. Getting fewer things in your house, but things of better quality. The things that truly you love, that truly work well. You know how it is when you go to, you know, slice a tomato. When you have a... a Ginsu knife that's dull as ditch water, as my mother would say, versus a nice, one nice, really sharp knife. Whoosh. So much easier to work. You know, 10 crappy pieces of chocolate never taste as good as one really good piece of chocolate. Maybe two really good pieces of chocolate. So thinking of the quantity and quality of stuff in your home. And thinking of it too, not just thinking about it, but feeling it. When you look at something, you don't just see it, you feel it. You feel happy when you look at something that reminds you of a good time. You feel heavy and depressed maybe when you look at something that reminds you of something sad or something that didn't go well or maybe somebody who's not here anymore or mad because you wasted all those years on that crap, you know, that asshole who you used to be married to or whatever, you know. You feel... You're a feeling person, okay? You deserve to feel good in your home. And one way you can do that if you're not feeling it now is to declutter. That's, that's what I do. I feel good in my house. I love walking from room to room. Can I tell you one of the really great things about decluttering? You guys, it takes no time at all to clean our house. Like it used to. It used to take us, like, if we had people over, like, we had people over on Monday night. I got out of coaching. I had a full day. I got out of coaching at, like, 5 o'clock, 5.30. People were coming at 6.30. I wasn't freaked out about it. I was tired because I had a day of coaching and consultations. I needed to go zoop, 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 a couple of dis dust bunnies here, whatever. I knew exactly where all my, my serving dishes were for the food. And easy peasy, lemon squeezy. No stress to get the place ready for other people. And also no stress when we walk around and the place is just pretty much organized. Now it's not a museum, no. We have stuff in the dishwasher and the dryer and you know, we've got stuff going on, but man, it's not like the piles we used to have. And that feels so good. That's why I can get some really good stuff done because I'm not dealing with the surface clutter anymore. I was able to find some money in a bank account that I forgot I had, and then I transferred it to a bank account with a high-yield savings account that I learned about that kind of thing here on TikTok. And um, now I'm making more money on that money because I had time to in, like do that. So notice that decluttering benefits your life in so many ways. It is. It improves your mood, your mental health. It improves your relationships to not, to when you begin to declutter because those things that cause stress between people, you're dealing with them and you're resolving them. You're not just stuffing them away in a closet. You also get more time in your life. Not really more time because we're all, we all get the time we have, but you can make better use of the time you have. And when I say better use, it's like, seriously? I scroll so much more on TikTok. I relax so much more. I read so much more. I go for walks. I hang out with friends. I do fun stuff because I don't have to clean my house as often. 
because I don't have to dig around and waste time looking for stuff because I know where things are. You know, I have more time for my hobbies and my hobby is relaxing. So I just do a lot more of that. I also, as I said, like sometimes we did a thing, one of my TikTok lives that's on um, YouTube. It's probably, I do them I do them by month. Like the October ones are all only available for um, the people on the mailing list. But any other month, is, is you can look at it. There was one we did either in September or August or July, somewhere over the summer, where I said, okay, have you found ever found any money when you're decluttering? And decluttering can make you money. It can stop you from paying for storage. It can stop you from paying overdue fees when you can't find your bills. It can start you selling stuff if you want to sell it. Um, you might find some cash. You might find a um, gift card that you didn't know you had. But the coolest thing you're going to find when you declutter is you're going to find out about yourself. Who you were in the back, back, back in the day. Oh, I used to have a crush on Sean Cassidy. Here's my Sean Cassidy um, album that probably has like a Bonnie Bell lip smacker or a what was that stuff? Kissing potion? I can smell it right now. There's probably a lip smack mwah, in the poster inside that because of when I kissed the poster when I in 1978. Nowadays, do I like Sean Cassidy? Eh, not so much. It's who I, you know, back in the day I had a crush on him. Now who do I like? I like my husband. I think he kind of has some Sean Cassidy qualities, but he's even better. You find out about yourself when you declutter. Who you were who you are right now and who you want to be in the future. You know, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. You know, who you were. These are the things, these are the things I like to do when I was in my 20s. These are the things I like to do when I was in my 30s. These are the clothes I used to wear when I was in my teens. These are the shoes I used to wear when I worked retail. These are the shoes I used to wear when I worked in a corporate office. Nowadays, I mean, I still get my slippers on. So you find out about yourself. You discover, one of the things you discover in the treasure hunt known as decluttering is what you like now. What worked for you in the past may still work for you, keep it. But if it doesn't, you can let it go because you're making space for what does work for you now. And you don't need to know the whole big picture. I don't know what works for me now. You're gonna find it out when you start digging through your stuff. Cause some stuff you're gonna be like, yay. And other stuff you're gonna be like, ugh. And there's gonna be stuff in between, okay? So I hope that helps. Now we've got about 3.43. Uh, it's about 3.43 in the afternoon. As I said, Beth, Destination Declutter, Decluttering Life Coach. I'm really here to just answer your questions um, for about clutter to help you get started. But also, frankly, one of the reasons I show up like this is because I do one-on-one -on -one decluttering coaching. Now I do this with clients. We work, I, I have a 10 session package that I sell. Um, I have clients on their first. I have clients that haven't even started yet, starting next week because I just signed up. I'm going to be working with some brand new people. I have clients that are on their first package, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. So no matter how long you want to hang out with me, I've got paid coaching for that. It's totally up to you. Um, we coach over Zoom. I can tell you about that. So I have clients. I'm looking at my map of the U.S. I'm in Pennsylvania, but I, I have clients all over the world. I say world, the U.S., it's, it's not international. Um, and what else? What else do you want to know? Drop a comment, or drop a question about decluttering or coaching in the, in the comments and I can answer it for you, you know? But I show up here really so you can get to know me. You can get to know to be like, could I stand hanging out with her for 10, 10 weeks or 20 weeks or 30 weeks or whatever for paid coaching? That's up to you. I would like to think, honestly, that I consistently and inconsistently show up as just myself. You know, I'm a Gen Xer of a certain age who looks a certain way, who's had certain life experiences, but I've learned some stuff and I want to share it with you. Okay. Now, always justice 007. Three houses shoved into one. Two, two, two mints in one. It makes my skin crawl. Notice how your body reacts to clutter. Notice how your body's reacting. It makes my skin crawl and I just cry. But I finally got a start on it. Yeah. Allow your body to feel its feelings. But know that that crawly skin and crying doesn't last. It doesn't. And after you do that, 
you're going to feel better. Again, talk about what your body does naturally. When it wants to release something, it cries, it poops, it screams. It, like it's not you, but notice you're, you have a bodily, physical reaction to your clutter. When you allow yourself to feel that and get on the other side of it, kind of like driving through a rainstorm, now you can finally get a start on it. All right, now always just as 007. I'm here to help you with that. There's so many resources, paid, unpaid, all the things. But notice what you're doing. You are working with your nervous system and your body. You're not fighting against it. You're not ignoring how you feel. You're dealing with it. You're feeling it. You're feeling with it. And then you're doing something different. Okay? Now, if somebody said the screen froze. Oops. I don't know. I see something somebody just said. Yeah. Um, okay. Stacey Bond says, I'm in the same boat. My parents and his. Yeah. You guys, us Gen Xers, we are the double stuff in the Oreo cookie of life. We are. We get old people on one end and we get young people and the, on the bottom, you know, chocolate cookie. We are the cream stuff. Okay. So we are the cream in the Oreo cookie. So we, when we're dealing with our stuff, we are probably also, we've got our eyes on, oh crap, when mom dies, what are we going to do with her stuff? And then we've got, I don't have kids, but nieces and nephew. Do I really want to sh saddle them with having to go through all my stuff like I had to go through that stuff. Now, also, you don't want to saddle people with thoughts about hanging on to stuff, telling people they need to hang on to stuff even if they don't want it. Practice releasing what doesn't serve you, you know? Um, so practice that with other people. Don't guilt people into saving stuff. Do not declutter shame people, you know? Now, Rach is saying, is it rude to tell family who want heirlooms I'm giving away that I'll only hold on to them for so long? No, no. Boundaries and plan making. I'm all about them. So if a family member wants an heirloom that you're giving away, if they really want it, tell them to come and get it, come and get it, come and get it. Tell them to come and get it. Make a plan and a deadline and say, if you don't get it by this time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to donate it because I'm not going to be your, I'm not your stepping stone. I'm not going to be your storage unit. Now, this may be a lot to do with like kids who have, you know, parents who have older kids who is, you know, whatever. But you don't need to live in a storage unit. I realized at one point, I used to save a lot because I came from the paper era that if you didn't have the paper copy of something, you were out of luck. And at a certain point, I said, wait a minute. Why do I have to be the Library of Congress for this random stuff? I can find this elsewhere. You know, having boundaries, that's another wonderful thing. What do I want and what do I not want? Yes, I want you in your life. No, I don't want you. Yes, I want these items in my house. No, I don't want those items in my house. Boundaries. I remember once in one of my coaching trainings, we talked about it almost like one of those velvet ropes at a really cool like restaurant or nightclub. You're allowing certain things in and you're not allowing certain things, you know? Um, Danielle says, how do you work through kids decluttering? Um, now, I'm not quite sure if you're, what I say is get kids involved with decluttering ASAP, you know? Um, okay, always just a 007. I still want to stay but have to get ready for an appointment. You're all set. I'm going to take care of you. I'm only here for another 11 minutes and I hop into coaching and then I'm going to um, do stuff today. Um, all of my TikTok lives are recorded and there are literally over like 200 of them on um, Destination Decluttered on YouTube. Now, if you want to specifically hear the rest of this one or rewatch this one, get on my mailing list, destinationdecluttered.com.com. Did you hear that? That's Boston right there. Um, destinationdecluttered.com slash join. Then you will have access to, you'll get to know how to log in and find the, you will get access to the October um, TikTok lives. If you don't want to get on the mailing list, you do you. Um, you'll only be able to see from September and before. So no worries. Go get yourself ready. Do not be late. Okay. Okay. My kids don't want to declutter any toys. Okay. Then train them to put them away. Train them that we only have as many toys as fit on the shelves. And when they don't fit on the shelves, then something's got to give, something's got to give, something's got to give that you got to do a one in one out. Train them, and I say train in a loving way. Get into the habit of. You're welcome always just as 007, I get you. And I do TikTok Lives, I will say this, when you sign up for the mailing list, you also know when my next TikTok Lives are, so you can, you can 
um, schedule them so you can show up, okay? Decluttering is a life skill. Decluttering is a life skill that some of us did not learn when we were growing up. Never too late to learn something new, so let's learn it now, even when I'm almost, you know, I, I, I gotta stop saying I'm almost 60, even when I'm only 58. Notice the same thing. It sounds different when you say it this way, right? I'm only 58. I am young. And I am physically 58, but I am mentally about 28. <laughs> 18, eight years old. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm mentally 18, but I can drink, but I'm also tired. Um, it is never too early or too late to learn the process of paying attention to what lights you up and what doesn't to be able to release things that no longer work for you, to not hang on with like a tight fist onto something and be afraid to let it go. Fear is a big part of decluttering. Well, fear is a big part of clutter. Love is a big part of decluttering. Yeah, man. Listen to me, I'm like a beatnik, I'm a hippie. I'm a life coach, I'm a geisha, I'm a little girl. Oh my God, I am a Gen Xer with a constant radio in my head, but I love how my brain works. It cracks me up. I crack me up. You know, I say, you know, table 17, your pizza's ready. Or at Villa Piano is out by the airport. You know? Okay, Julie Cox, wish I could have someone come force me to pitch things. You don't want to be forced to pitch things. You would resent that. You want to be in control. The better thing is you deciding, as the clash would say, should I stay or should I go now? You get to decide what you keep and what you want to get rid of. That is so much better than somebody else. Somebody coming in and giving you the opportunity to make that decision. Sure, somebody can sit there. This is why I don't go to people's houses. All I would do would be picking up an item being like, what's this? Do you want it or don't you? I don't know the stories behind your stuff. You do. You making a decision about what stories you keep and what stories you release. You know, yeah, then I make excuses to keep it all. Okay, ask yourself why. Get curious about it. Christine says, it's empowering to make the decisions yourself. Yeah, I am showing up not to do the work for you. I am here to make the, the work easier and more fun. Because when work is easy and fun, it's easier to just get it done. And if you do decluttering right, you will always be bringing things into your life and releasing them. It's called a flow. You're going to things flow in, things flow in, flow out. Worms play plea knuckle on your spout, your snout. Um, see, I crack myself up and then I get distracted. Learning how to pay attention to what you want gets you what you want. Knowing what you don't want keeps it out of your life. The sooner rather than later, you know? Yes, our Caldwell 75 right here, Gen X right here. Yes, I think it's how we we connect. We know when we're saying stuff, I always find a song and things or else I say, yeah, or someone else says. Yes, completely. Uh-huh. Oh, interesting. Kara says, and I'll get, I'll, I'll tell you, my therapist told me Monday, go to the future for 10 minutes. Grieve and make a pact to come back. Yeah. Feeling grief is part of the human condition. But for those of you, here's the really cool thing about being cluttered, okay? And says, then live in the present and declutter and work, etc. Yes. If you have clutter, you're lucky. You know why? Because you don't have lack. No, you don't have nothing. If anything, you've got something and you've got so much something that you have too much. Clutter is an abundance problem. You are so lucky. You have too much. But you notice that having too much doesn't feel good like you thought it would. What you can do is you can release. You can move those things and you do it in a way that feels right to you, at a pace that feels right to you, so then you feel better. You get closer to your just right point. This is where I'm always thinking of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Now, never mind, she broke into somebody's house and sat and ate and slept and all that. But think of it. Too hot, too cold, just right. Too little, too much, just right. You deciding 
based on what you feel is too much or too little is just right. If it feels too much for you, it is too much for you. It may not be too much for somebody else. Paying attention to yourself. You know? Uh-huh. I love this. Lori Hanna. Lori Hanna and I have been coaching and she's sending you. We're all on this journey together, but we're all at different parts of our own journey. Lori is saying, I never thought I could really get to where I am. Thought it would be me forcing it, but it's so easy now. You guys, I show up in your life to make decluttering easier. To make it fun. It's all I want to do. Oh. My husband probably says that's all I want to do. No, I like to fart around a lot myself. I want to help you realize it can be easy. It can be insightful. You can learn stuff. It can You can discover things. There's so much good stuff hidden in your clutter. It's like a treasure hunt. Now, if you don't want to deal with it, I can't force you. I won't force you. I do not get into convincing and forcing. I did that back in the day before I learned to coach better. I did it, you know, forcing people, get rid of that. You don't need that. Oh, yeah? If you may tell me I, I don't want it, I'm going to hang on to it even tighter. Learning about yourself. That's why I decided to become not just a decluttering coach, a decluttering life coach. Okay? So that's why I'm here in your life right now. Maybe the universe just had me come up on your FYP. Maybe it was TikTok. I don't know. Maybe you've been following me for a while. But seriously, the only reason I take an hour out of my day, almost every day of my life, except for when I'm traveling and when I don't feel like it, to do a TikTok live is to, to wake you up, to remind you, you can do this. You deserve to live feeling good. And if you're not feeling good, let's figure out why, clutter-wise, and let's do something about it, okay? Now, speaking of feeling good, I am going to sign off in about a minute because I need to stretch my body, I'm going to drink some water, I'm going to grab um, a little snack, and then I'm going to hop into coaching and consultations, okay? So a couple of things before I sign off, all right? I am here for you. If you like what I'm doing, follow my TikTok page, Wicked Easy. Get on my free mailing list, Wicked Easy, Destination Decluttered at, at, at Destination Decluttered dot com. That's it. YouTube, that's what I was, I think my, my, bot, my, my mouth was saying. Um... If you want one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, if you want me to be in your life, if you want me to show up on Zoom and help you decide what you want, I can do that. That's my paid coaching. Find out about that on my website, destinationdeclutter.com. I will share with you that my schedule is getting happily full. And because I am mindful of not enough, too much, and just right, I am really sensing, I am feeling, I am getting to my, as I say, my max cap my max capacity. So if you've been hemming and hawing on getting me to, as your coach, the sooner you sign up for a consultation, the better. You know, now I don't do this as a infomercial for coaching, but you know, Christine is saying best coaching is the best. You won't regret it. You know, I love it. Freckles the Menace is saying cleaning my vehicle while listening to you. Finally, rock on. I just say to you, yeah, that was your, I, 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 in the next month, will probably be where I cannot accept any new clients until somebody stops coaching. But I have people that are on with me for, for quite a while, okay? So use this as a, as, a, as a loving shove, as a push, you know? Um, if you're interested in coaching, hop on my mailing list. Go to my website, look at the calendar, get a consultation. The consultation is free. And as I like to say, can't hurt, might help, okay? Now I'm gonna sign off. I will see you, this is where I get all coy. I may see you tomorrow if I'm doing a TikTok Live. Some of you on the mailing list know if I'm going to or not. Others of you are like, I don't know, but I want to find out, okay? Christine, always a pleasure to see you. All, always a pleasure to see all y'all, even if we just met. My, my TikTok Lives, they attract a lot of cool people, okay? You're in, a, you're in good company when you're here. We are fun, we are supportive, we are the world. We are the children, okay? Now, uh, there you go. Christine knows because you're part of the Cool Kids Club, okay? If you want to be part of the Cool Kids Club too, get on my mailing list, destinationdecluttered.com slash join, all right? I will see you later, and um, I don't know. Go rock the free world, okay? <laughs>